Okay. So yeah, we got unlimited videos on the Garzuela channel now too. Before before you had to put make a whole bunch of uh, channel. I don't know, but we're on the air, so if you got anything you want to record, just tell the camera. You put me on the spot. Well, take your time. We got. I need to rehearse. Well, I need to rehearse for this. <laughs> take your. I haven't either, but take your time. We have a uh, hour and ten minutes before this thing runs out of. Juice. Oh wow, we got an hour and ten minutes. Okay. Well, that's good. I'll have to think about. Let's see, where were we last time? We're at the death kit. You you can yeah. even read out you can read out your your grandpa's book collection if you want. Curse of the Canaanites. Curse of the Canaanites. Maybe we should read from Andrea. That's a that's a new idea. Yeah, at least you stay focused. At least you stay focused, and you never have a new thing you do. I can't. That's my problem. I can't stay focused. I'm making. I'm doing behind the scenes MySpace blogs because it's on. It's like, I'll do blogs, and then like nine months later, I'll come back and I'll see that some of the stuff I was blogging about, like, was how I was behaving on the internet for the last year. <laughs> So I gotta make plans too. I guess the gas station that Timmy was working at got robbed last night. Well, it seems like I saw something that looked like it could have been a. I think we're stirring up too much energy again, and things are starting to happen. Yeah. You lost your job, I guess. Well, I'm doing what you're doing. I'm just being a hermit because. Uh, no one's forcing me to do anything, so. No one's forcing you to do anything? Yeah, what I told is, you this, here. is this when you just harvest brainstorm? Well, I told you to come here and be a hermit here, but you're not doing that, so. I know, yeah. but we're, well, it's because I think it works better. I can be a, in a parallel reality. Oh, there are some more indications that I'm in a parallel. Oh, I know, because. Remember when you thought that your pee smelled? You thought you had can't accomplish most two places, I guess. Yeah, we got to split up and just split up. I just, I just don't want you to freeze to death is all. Um, if you. someone steals my sleeping bag, I might freeze to death. Actually, I'll just go hang out in the 24-hour gas station and ask for free coffee all night and sleep during the day or something I don't know but I, I the more we get these videos on YouTube it seems like the more I end up indoors because when I go down to Glenwood on Thanksgiving I'm staying the night at the pastor's house so so we're talk, we've been talking about Occupy rural communities you are you doing Occupy Clay Center now Much, I, I, oh, like MySpace blogs are a good place to do your confessions if you put your MySpace profile in private. Confessions? Confessions. Should I confess? Well, I don't know. We're not on the MySpace blog right now. This is reality. Oh, I should, I should make a MySpace. I, I forgot you can upload MySpace videos. This is kind of a nuance of post minimalism here. Oh, the second I blew a breaker. Something's blowing. Uh, house is a Neanderthal electrical system. Yeah. <coughs> 
just dump out all the evidence on the internet. Got any, you got any passages to read? I'm working on it. I got a, I had to trip the breaker because the heater wasn't on. Chilly down here. Oh yeah, I'm getting a lot more creative now that I got the the film rolling. On my okay. MySpace blog, I'm typing a MySpace blog. I feel a lot more creative while the. While the film's rolling. This might be tricky. Hmm? <coughs> what? Did you go? Humanism. Hedonism. You know what humanism is? Should we talk about humanism? Humanism? Yeah. Oh, that, that'll get him going. The essential ingredient of humanism, hatred, can be traced directly back to its source, the demon worshippers of Baal in ancient history. The Canaanites who indulged their appetite for human sacrifice in the name of religion... Oh, are you in the Canaanite book? In the right of honoring their gods and child murder in the name of Moloch. These are the same Canaanites who operate great nations of the world today and who eagerly look forward to more of the massacres which they have perpetrated in the 20th century and which has made our time the scene of the greatest mass murders in the history of mankind. <laughs> On stage, stage. Oh, that's that staged atrocities thing we were learning about last the time. The demonic sources of humanism are reflected not only in their denial of God and the cabalistic claim that God took no part in the actual creation of the world, but also in its philosophical inspiration, which stems solely from Satan and his evil activities. As I am Haldeman writes, all the spirit world is moved with the wisdom wisdom of the fallen angel. The spirits <laughs> of the dark though, are coming forth in the spiritistic period. Spiritism is but the agency in the hands of that great fallen angel who still retains the title as the prince and god of this world and of long date is determined to fulfill and function its <laughs> I'm taking notes on my MySpace blog. Like, believe that Satan is in control of this world. <laughs> I'm taking notes on my MySpace blog. Is he in control? He's in control. Ever since Comedy Central got put on basic cable, he's been in control. Who's been in control? Tommy <laughs> Central? You watch Adult Swim on Cartoon Network? We gotta get this flow. Okay, what do we. Oh, uh, we wanted to go to treatbook.com. Hmm? Oh, you're back to your Urantia sermon? Well, we gotta... We gotta find answers. We gotta find answers. And, uh, this has got answers. Uh, but too bad nobody asked us a question. How do we get people to ask us a question on here? Form. Wow. How the Urantia book changed my life. That could be good. Answers to life's toughest, toughest question. Should we go with that one? Subatomic particles? Why is it not okay to abort even though the adjuster and thus the soul come five years after the baby's birth? Wow, that's a good question. Yeah, it sounds kind of... Well, it kind of sounds like they're leading to the answer 
they made up. After death. It sounds like they let they're leading to the answer that they made up. If we were all created equal, why are some people better than others in terms of spiritual growth? I don't know. Okay, they're, they're already assuming something that they just put the answer in your head without even letting you ask a question. That, that what happens is, when you know, a baby dies crap. or a mentally handicapped person dies? That's Do they go a, to the mansion world? That's a false doctrine. I always wondered that. Do babies go to heaven? Do babies go to heaven? Finally, the answer to this question. I've asked many ministers, and they did not. They gave, they blew me off. You know what? I think those idiots have been spending too much time with Mormons because they ask the same stupid questions all the time. Short answer is yes. Little babies and even unborn babies go on to be afforded the same opportunity for eternal life as any mortal. They go to the probational nursery <laughs> in the probational first mansion nursery? world. They go to the probational, the probationary nursery. Just, just when you thought that Mormons couldn't come up with the biggest bullshit, then, then this the idiot comes along. The receiving out. schools of Satania are situated on the, the finalier, finalier world, the first of the jurors of transition world. culture spheres. These infant receiving schools are enterprises devoted to the nurture and training of the children of time including those who have died on the evolutionary world of space before the acquirement of individual status on the universe records. In the event of the survival of either or both of such child parents, the guardian of destiny or associated cherubim as the custodian of the child's potential identity charging the cherubim with the responsibility of delivering this undeveloped soul into the hands of the mansion world teachers in the probationary yeah. nurseries of the Marantia world. Is this interesting enough that you like, want to listen to this later? I finally got an answer for my question. As for mental handicap and survival, this issue is not really addressed in the Urantia book. My instinct is to say that anyone who is indwelt by a thought adjuster and who has capacity for spiritual growth would surely be included in the mansion world experience, even if they may be mentally deficient in some ways. But even some mortals who do not have adductors can be spirit used. Mentally handicapped is a very broad term. There are degrees of mental incapacity and one's potential for grasping the necessary elements of survival, like faith, might make a difference. But I am not able to say. As to the chances of mortal survival, let it be made forever clear all soul souls of every possible phase of mortal existence will survive provided they manifest willingness to cooperate with their indwelling adjusters and exhibit a desire to find God and to attain divine perfection. Even though these desires be but the first faint flickers of a primitive comprehension of that true light which lies down the end of the Get back to the Canaanite book. Hope this is terrible. Well, has been helpful to you. Thanks so much for writing this. This is the uh, worst so sermon I've ever heard. Find another question. <laughs> this is so uh, far. This God is the is worst. Knowing, the worst lesson. In this is a good one. That's a good one. If God is all knowing and all forgiving, then shouldn't we all go to heaven? I think we should all go to heaven. I think. If God is all knowing and all forgiving, then shouldn't we go to heaven? The truth is that the vast majority of people will probably go to heaven. The Rancho book teaches that survival after death is gained by faith. It's the kind of faith you asked about in your first question. Even the faintest flicker of faith is sufficient to propel us into eternal life. The only thing that will prevent anyone from moving forward in the modern is the deliberate and willing rejection of this plan of survival. Or deliver things assistant embracing of sin. Yeah, quit jerking off. Quit jerking off, Kurt. <laughs> this is, this is like the least in this is like a sermon that makes me feel like crap when I'm listening to it. Marred by the partial failures of epochal revelation, faith is a great challenge. Even to those who have no knowledge of the Heavenly Father, faith can come. 
even some will faith that there must be more to come after death will probably be sufficient to ensure survival. Once we experience that survival and waking in the Father's many mansions, we will have ample opportunity to make the final choice for eternal survival. What happened to John 3.16? I thought that you had to believe that. You, you sound like you're expressing your own views. For God to love the world. <laughs> I can't even tell you're reading out of a book. You sound so passionate and about what you're reading. Even him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16, that's all you need. Don't talk to him about that at all. There. That is, that's the problem. The problem, the conflict. I think you sound really passionate about what you're reading out of a book, like it's your own point of view. life, so many of us lack the basic understanding of who we are, where we came from, and where we are going. It is very easy to falter and fall to the wayside as we grow in the darkness. But God understands all of us come up short when it comes to being perfect. As the Father is perfect, He knows what kind of challenges we face here, and He does He does give our shortcomings. He's not willing that any should perish. But He knows what you're going to do with that Jerkham's lotion when you buy it. <clears throat> I decided this is a study in in manipulation and religious brainwashing. Is that your dog? What is the role of a gesture? Here's a good one. What is the role of an adjuster? The thought adjuster is one of the central elements of your Antia book. Thought adjuster is the actual presence of God in the mind of every normal minded mortal. When we speak of God within, we are speaking about this presence of God, a fragment of deity by which the infinite God is able to live in intimate contact with his children on earth and share the finite experience of life. The mission of the thought adjusters to the human race is, is to represent the, the universal Father to the mortal creatures of time and space. That is the fundamental work of the divine gifts. Their mission is also that of evaluating the mortal minds and of translating the mortal souls of men up to the divine heights and spiritual levels of paradise perfection. And in this experience of this transforming the human nature of the temporal creature into the divine nature of the eternal finaliter, it just just bring into existence a unique type of being, a being consisting in the eternal union of the perfect adjuster and a perfected creature which it would be impossible to duplicate by any other universe technique. In a nutshell, this above quote explains the role of the thought adjuster, a unique type of being, a being consisting in the eternal union of the perfect adjuster and the perfect creature, which it would be impossible to duplicate by any other universe technique. It is a description of the immortal soul that survives death and progresses in the eternal life of the spirit. The adjuster's presence is vital to the creation and growth of the soul. The presence of God in our minds is largely an unconscious or superconscious experience. By every decision we make for the good, the truth, and the beautiful, we cooperate with the leading of the gesture, and by such, just that much, we enhance and increase the growth of our soul. Okay. I've been wanting my soul to grow a lot lately. Does that answer your question? <clears throat> If you're if you're doing a study on brainwashing oh, and shoving bullshit down someone's throat, then that they I'm, answer my I'm question. I'm out of 